I have not drank any whiskey since the last time I drank whiskey in a video on this uh, channel. So I had to pull out the really good stuff here. It's fine. Johnny Walker, double black. Fun fact, the screw top off of a bottle of uh, Jameson fits perfectly on this bottle. So, the astute among you may have noticed this is not the awesome window manager, my usual setup. It is not uh, DWM or BSBWM or any of the other window managers I've mentioned that I wanted to try. Uh, in fact, it's not Arch Linux at all. This is actually uh, Solus Linux. And more specifically, this is the Solus Linux installer. And I want to talk about this today because I think Arch Linux is very clearly my favorite Linux distribution ever. It's the thing that got me to switch to Linux. But a very, very close second is this Linux distribution right here. Actually, the MacBook that I used to use to make videos uh, is now just running Solus Linux. It doesn't even run Mac OS anymore. The same is true of this ThinkPad T430, I think, that uh, I was memed into buying when I first switched to Linux. It also runs Solus Linux and works fine, better than fine. It works great. This is, I think, an amazing operating system that I really, really like, especially on a laptop. This is actually the first time I've ever installed it on a desktop, but it's really, I think, friendly for beginners. So I thought I'd go through the install and set things up and talk a bit about why I think this is such a great Linux operating system. I think actually when this will be released, the most recent video that I uploaded was an Arch Linux install guide. And actually kind of the point of that video was to prove that once you've done Arch Linux enough times and you've learned how to work the installer, it actually doesn't have to be a super cumbersome process. I think I actually set a timer in that video to time exactly how long it would take to install Arch. And I wasn't trying to do like a speed run or anything. I was installing Arch and getting a proper window manager set up and it took 12 minutes. But Arch Linux compared to just about anything else is cumbersome. It doesn't necessarily have to be incredibly time consuming. It doesn't necessarily have to be incredibly difficult, but it does require a good amount of involvement. This type of installer, while it does provide less customization and less options, uh, and you do sort of have to just go along with what the developers think is good to an extent, is incredibly easy. For example, stuff like this, using LVM or encrypting your disk, one click. You can do both of those things in Arch Linux, but they're much more involved processes. Now, I don't know that that's necessarily the selling point for me. I don't reinstall my uh, OSs all that much, so it's it's really not all that cumbersome for me to you know spend a day or something setting up a install because I'm, I'm probably not going to reinstall. I don't like to just swap out OSs on any of my hardware all the time, but this is, I think, uh, a very easy installer. The one thing that I don't like about this installer, and I know more and more Linux distros are doing this and definitely Mac OS and Windows do this, is they're sort of kind of restrictive of what kind of password you can use. I mean, like they're not that restrictive. It has to be a six character password, but it's just sort of weird. Like a lot of times in my VMs, I just use space as a password. That's not something I can do here. So I don't know, it's a bit odd, but I'll give it a proper password. One thing that this still does have over Mac OS and uh, Windows, well, definitely Windows, I'm not sure about Mac OS, is you don't have to make an account with Microsoft or Apple or something just to use the OS, so that's nice. If you're not familiar with Solus now that it's installing, this is sort of a weird Linux distro. I think there's a huge tree of uh, Linux distributions out there, and everybody's seen that giant list of here's all the different Linux distros that you could possibly install. But the thing is, is almost all of those Linux distributions are based on three things, Ubuntu or Debian, Debian, Fedora, or Arch. Those are really options. Almost everything else is some sort of a derivative of that. Solus is not, actually. I'm not quite sure why they thought it was necessary, but the Solus guys did actually go and make their complete own Linux distribution. It's not based on Ubuntu. It's not based on Arch or anything. It's its, its own fresh thing. It has its own package management system. But as much as that seems sort of odd and is unnerving, the thing is Solus has been around for long enough now, I think like four or five years at least, that the package manager isn't really an issue. The name of the package manager is uh, EO Package. It's easy to operate. It's very similar to apt-get, uh, so you can just do something like uh, sudo eo package upgrade and very quickly and easily upgrade all of the software in your system. Uh, and once you've done that, eo package actually does have a good amount of software. So, you know, let's say I want to install Alacrity. That's very, very easy to do. Uh, I just have to do it as root, which I forget because I have so many aliases on my normal system, uh, but I can install it very, very easily. It's right there in the uh, Solus repository, which actually was slightly 
slightly surprising. I think Alacrity wasn't even in the uh, Ubuntu repository until kind of sort of fairly recently. Uh, but then, you know, I, I can get rid of this sort of gross terminal that I'm not really into. And hey, now I've got something that I'm uh, much more familiar with. Does git come pre-installed? It doesn't, but that's pretty easy. Sudo, sudo video package install git. That'll probably take like two seconds to download. And then I can pull down dot files and have this config. Using this on a laptop, which is what I normally do, there's very few places that I can't find the software that I need. So uh, Ghostwriter, it's a markdown writer I use sometimes, that's there. OBS, of course, is here. Uh, Steam, LibreOffice, obviously. Thunderbird, MailSpring. Most of the big sort of Linux apps are in this uh, repository. Does it have as much software as apt? Definitely not. Does it have as much software as Pac-Man? Definitely not. Does it have as much software as the AUR? Not even close. But the AUR is sort of the gold standard. A really good example of that is Tenacity. This is the new uh, fork of Audacity. You may not have noticed if you don't use Arch Linux that it's actually been released now because it's not in the uh, Ubuntu repositories yet. It's certainly not in the Solus repositories yet. It is in the AUR. That's that's sort of the thing with the AUR is basically everything you want is going to be there. There just might be three different versions of it and 10 forks. But the other thing to keep in mind is that I think people forget about that use Arch Linux all the time is there are other projects like Flatpak and like the Snap Store, which I know people aren't huge fans of, but in terms of a replacement for the AUR, that's a super, super cross-platform, works on almost every Linux distribution, Flatpak and the Snap Store, and allows you to install all sorts of apps that uh, aren't available in a lot of the main repositories. So Spotify, Firefox, Minecraft, GIMP, Nextcloud, like all sorts of stuff that you, you, you would really want to have access to, but may not be available, especially in something like this, Solus, which I've been using a really, really long time back in the beginning like you absolutely needed something like flatback just to get basic software also stuff like homebrew is available here the homebrew is available everywhere uh, and that's something i used to use when i was on mac os and it'll sort of fill in some of the gaps so like every once in a while with eo package because it is a new system you'll run into something that's just not there for example eo package search fortune for whatever reason one of my favorite little command line apps is not in this repository but Literally to install homebrew is one command and then you have to add a path to your bash RC or your ZSharc or whatever And then I can install fortune. So in terms of software availability, it's like it's not great But that's mostly just because I'm coming from Arch Linux where you can install basically any app you want and will almost never have to build it from source or download an app image or anything else like that just because you've got the AUR almost everything is there one, one thing I should mention is um, one of the sort of weird quirks of Solus that I'm not a hundred percent sure why this exists is uh, there's these third-party apps that they have access to that are like fairly big apps like Google Chrome is part of this and so is Spotify and Sublime Skype Slack a few other things that people will probably want to use and these are available through Solus, but if I were to just, uh, let's say EO package and search for Spotify, for example, this actually isn't here. It doesn't show up in the package manager on the command line. So actually I was installing Spotify via Flatpak for forever before I realized that actually, no, you can just install Spotify. You just have to like go and open up their little software center app and then do it through this interface, which that's just a weird quirk. Like I mentioned, not many of the apps that do it. I mean, honestly, Spotify is really the only thing that I grab from this list. I don't use Sublime or Slack or anything. So, so that's handy, but I, I should mention that. I think that's sort of an insider secret I'll give you. Uh, but I think the most interesting thing about Solus is not the software or the software availability or anything like that. It is budgie. This is the desktop environment that is designed by Solus to run their operating system. And if you go to the Solus website, you can actually download other desktop environments. So like, hang on, let me double check and see what they ship here. Uh, all right, yeah, so they ship Budgie, they ship Gnome, Mate, and KDE Plasma. But just do yourself a favor and download Budgie. Like, using Budgie is really the main reason to use Solus to begin with, I would argue. On the surface, Budgie isn't all that interesting. I mean, they they use GTK for most of their apps um, and if you go to like the desktop settings it's really easy to change the widget themes the icon themes this isn't anything new you can change the cursors you can change the theme you can change everything really really easily you can turn animations off and you do have a nice dark theme toggle it does everything that it should do and one of the really nice things about Solus is it doesn't
does a bit more than it needs to. Like sometimes things get a little muddy with some of these Linux distros, like they'll theme GTK apps pretty much perfectly, but then you'll install something that uses Qt or something and it kind of won't work as well. That's not the case here. It themes GTK, it themes Qt, everything looks fine out of the box. And I think that in and of itself is sort of a big point in terms of like, and if you're looking for something to recommend new Linux users, uh, I think people really pick up on things looking polished like i don't think most people really care if their os looks nice like how many terrible pixelated wallpapers do you see if you were to just walk through an office building or a school or something okay but i do think people absolutely pick up on the aesthetic of things as a indicator of quality like i think a big part of the reason that people think that macbooks and iphones and stuff are high quality which they are for the most part is just because of the packaging that they come in which is like super pristine super nice super clean looks good so it definitely helps that the os looks nice but also it helps that it's super customizable so like for example you can take this panel that they give you by default and uh obviously you could let's say throw it up to the top of the screen that's something i like to do i'm typically a bigger fan of a uh, top panel but hey maybe that's not good enough maybe i actually want to just start to maybe remove applets from the deal here and really this is you know not the most advanced uh, system customization out there in the world but you know here let's just go for an example here let me try to sort of build something I, I think budgie sort of ships in a way that looks like Windows 10 so let's maybe turn us on its head and try to make it look like Mac OS so go into dock well no I probably don't want to do the dock mode thing here well here let's um Let's get rid of this icon task list here. Create a new panel. We'll put it on the bottom. Make sure we have transparency on, shadow off. Make sure we set it to dock mode. We're just gonna add one applet. We'll add the uh, icon task list here. And then we just need to scale it up a lot. And hey, look at that. Now we've got a dock at the bottom of the screen and a bar up here. Now we've gone from something that looks familiar for Windows 10 people to something that's very familiar to Mac OS users super, super quickly. Now I'm not crazy. I've heard of KDE. I know that there are desktop environments with a ton more custom ability. I know that. But the name of the game here is balance, I think. This is something that people in the Linux community, which is typically a pretty dedicated and sort of nerdy and anorectic community, tend to forget. But like, there's a whole class of computer and phone users out there who anything more complex than moving an icon out of the desktop and opening a web browser is like a bridge too far. Like even just learning basic file management and how to store things in like a pictures folder and a documents folder, you know, forget actual file tree that's in involved in organizing a system, but just anything other than keeping files on your desktop is too much, more work than they want to do or that they're willing to do. So really what I'm trying to express is that there are gradations of the right balance for a lot of people. So you, you can start off with stuff like Windows and Mac OS, which you can customize to an extent, but is really built to be super, super handy for beginner users and is built to not require any setup. And just as a consequence of that, doesn't have a lot of customization options without sort of using the OS in a way that isn't necessarily intended by the user. Um, and I think there's plenty of Linux distributions that fall into that camp as well. Elementary OS is a, is a good example. Linux Mint, maybe to an extent. Like, there's plenty of stuff like that. Uh, and then, at the other end, you've got Arch Linux, my favorite OS, where every single thing that's on the system you have to install yourself. And you could set that up with a window manager where you have to install every little piece of the desktop environment yourself, uh, or you could do something like KDE, which is gonna make the sort of initial software installation set up, but still a ridiculous amount of customization options to the point that it can be a bit overwhelming for a lot of people. Solus, I think, occupies a really, really nice middle ground where if you, you know how to use the system, you want some customization options, you wanna make the system your own, but also like, I don't need to go and use a command line installer to install every piece of the OS myself. I don't need all of the options that are there with KDE or something sort of like that. I think XFCE is a little more manageable in terms of customization. But the thing is, I don't feel the need to go use KDE or XFCE because for the most part, Budgie gets me most of the customization options that I want uh, and also provides a decent amount of, uh, you know, modularity in terms of just what software I want to use. So like for an example, I think Thunderbird comes installed by default as an email client on Solus, which it does on a ton of different Linux distributions. I'm not particularly a big fan of it. I actually prefer, if I'm gonna use a graphical email client, I like something called uh, Mailspring, which Solus does have. 
Uh, it's just one line in a terminal to install. Uh, and then once I do that, hey, of course, I've got MailSpring here. But more than that, I can come in and say, all right, well, now I've got MailSpring as my email client. I don't really need Thunderbird anymore. So I come in and I go, EO package, remove, it's either remove or uninstall, Thunderbird. And hey, look at that. If I search for Thunderbird, hey, sorry, no items found. I don't have their bloat anymore, which I know that isn't unusual for a Linux distribution. I think people know it, but if you are coming from Mac OS or Windows, that's mind blown. You can just get rid of the bloat. Like that's very, very hard to do in Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, anything other than a Linux distribution or like a BSD distribution. Um, and also just in case I didn't mention it, if you're not a fan of the uh, command line, I don't know how you found my channel, but thanks for watching anyways. Um, you can use their software center app, which is really good to install all this stuff yourself. You don't have to go and use the actual EO package, package manager on the command line. Everything that I've installed, you can search for and install through a, a, a GUI interface like this. And also you can uh, remove it really easily. So let me see if I can find something else that I don't want here. Uh, it comes with, oh, it comes with LibreOffice. Nothing against LibreOffice, but I really don't ever use it. I don't have a need for a sort of typical word processor or anything like that. So here we go, LibreOffice base. Or else calc. Uh, so it looks like it's got LibreOffice, the cal the uh, like Excel knockoff. I can remove that, never gonna use it. I go through and remove all the apps that I'm never going to use. So that's that's really nice. But I think just what makes this OS so great is it's very, very well balanced for a good amount of use. It sort of maintains the super ease of use thing for new users or like people that just don't want to get in as involved with their system as maybe someone like me or probably someone like you does. Uh, you can just sort of use Budgie in its normal setup and never really have a problem. It puts Firefox for you right there in the sort of default uh, app list and a file manager and a video player and all the other things. But if you want to do some customization, you do have a lot of customization options, but not so much that you're going to have to sit here and read documents documentation or waste several hours trying to figure out how to customize your desktop. That's really a good thing here. I really, really like this OS. Uh, like I said, I do think the most special thing about it is Budgie. And to that end, you can, I think Ubuntu will ship with uh, Budgie now and a few other Linux distros will ship with Budgie as well. You can install Budgie on Arch Linux. I mean, if you're, if you're going to install Budgie, it works the best on uh, Solus, which is where it was built. And there's not really a great reason not to use Solus. Like the software accessibility, it's fine. Uh, like you might have trouble installing DaVinci to resolve or something like that on here. I don't, I don't think you'd have too much trouble, but y you might. A and to be fair, I don't use this on a desktop. It's not where I do the primary amount of work, but for something like a laptop, for me, this is perfect. And I think as a main OS for a lot of people, like all your friends who are always breaking their computer because they download 20 viruses, this would be a really, really great thing to replace Mac OS or Windows with. Uh, but yeah, this is a really, really well balanced OS. I honestly think for most of what I do, I could honestly maybe even swap in Solus instead of Arch, which I, I'm not particularly interested in doing. I don't really want to do because I do like Arch Linux so much, but there's no real reason you couldn't. But I think that's going to be it for this video. Uh, thank you everyone for watching it, and uh, I will see you in the next one.